following program deals with a controversial subject. The theories expressed are not the only possible interpretation. Viewers are invited to make a judgment based on all available information. Everything we've been told about history is wrong. And how we got here is really a very interesting question to ponder. There are known knowns. There are things we know we know. We also know there are known unknowns. That is to say, we know there are some things we do not know. How we got here, as far as the control system goes, is of course someone had an idea, put it into motion, and here we are. But when you look at the control system, and you look at what we've really done since the Industrial Revolution, it's really quite miraculous, it really is. Even when you look at what we've done in the last 30 or 40 years, technology has simply snowballed. Some of the technology we're using now is stuff that was never dreamt of when I was a child. It was all science fiction when I was a child. This was stuff out of Flash Gordon and bizarre comic books, but even Flash Gordon and some of the bizarre comic books didn't have the stuff that we've got now. So you really have to wonder where it all comes from. The point is, what I'm saying here is you can't really date a lot of the information that we believe we can date. Because all that really can be confirmed is that which exists within living memory. That's what we've got. You know, we don't really have any idea where we are, where we come from, or what's really going on here at all. And when you look at the growth of technology in the last hundred years, it really is quite amazing that we've managed to achieve what we've achieved, which again begs the question, where did it all come from? See, it's so difficult to get any real handle on history because there's been so much effort undertaken to destroy history. And really, that's what we're seeing now in the Middle East. I mean, why do you think they wage all these wars in the Middle East? It's because it's the cradle of civilization. And they're just destroying history all over the Middle East. They're destroying all the ancient artifacts they can, all the ancient cities they can, all the ancient structures that they can. Because the stuff that's there in the Middle East that they're bombing in Syria, places like Aleppo and Palmyra, these are far older than the places that you find in Europe. I mean, remember when they went into Iraq, one of the first things that the Allies did when they went into Iraq in the Gulf War was they looted the Baghdad Museum. And a lot of the artifacts in the Baghdad Museum were actually found scattered around the side of the road in certain back areas in the United States. All smashed to pieces, of course, but I remember some of these things even made the news, the fact that they were found. So they went in there specifically to destroy the history to find, locate all the ancient artifacts that indicated there was any history, then just take them and destroy them. Many of these things were priceless and they didn't even sell them. They didn't sell them on the black market or anything. They just took them to destroy them. The question is why? Over the ages, there's been so many groups that have destroyed so much stuff. I mean, the burning of the Alexandrian Library, for example, which was burnt by one or two, possibly even three groups of people. Burnt by the Christians, burnt by the Arabs, burnt by anybody who wanted to burn it. You look at ancient Egyptian civilization, it seems to have sprung full blown into being right from day one. That all seems perfectly normal. Look at Chinese civilization. That's always been an incredibly advanced civilization and always very hidden. And we don't know anything about where that came from because many Chinese emperors took it upon themselves to destroy all the history books that existed before them because they decided they would be the beginning of history and history should start with them and there should be no one before them so they destroyed all of the ancient scrolls that existed before they were born before they took rulership so the history would start there and i think a couple of emperors actually did that in china so it's pointless looking there for any information we may have got something from the mayans but the spanish did a great job of destroying all of their information we do have one or two codexes left but people simply can't translate them properly. Of course, there's a rich history to be found in Europe, but God knows what it is, because Europe has been a war zone since recorded history even started. So it's very difficult to know what happened there, because there's been so many cultures come and go, and so many armies march across the land, and so much destroyed across Europe. And of course, as in the case with any good battle, history is written by the winners. 
And all you've got to really do is go and travel around the world and look at stuff to see the truth of this. I mean, nothing is what they tell us it is. None of it makes sense. Nothing that they tell us makes sense. But when were they there is the question. Was it all really as long ago as what we think it was? And again, that may seem like a very strange question to ask, but I don't know, folks. I mean, everything we've been told is a lie, so you have to question this as well. You know, and the fact that it's so difficult to really discover too much about the Earth is what has promoted the concept of things such as the Flat Earth Society, the Flat Earth Movement, which has done so much damage to the resistance. It really has. Just the distrust and the divide and conquer and the insults and all the stuff that goes with it. I mean, you can research whatever you want, but you don't have to insult others while you do it. But even when looking at it, you can't blame the Flat Earthers for what they do. You really can't because there's so much wrong with the model that we're given. I mean, it doesn't mean it's flat, but there's certainly a lot wrong with what we're told is going on here. So you can understand where they've got the fuel for the fire that they're burning at the moment. And that's why the Flat Earthers and the Globe Earthers have got to put down all this fighting with each other and realise that they're both being played and they both have a common enemy, which is the one that created the mystery to begin with. And all we have to do is to realise that all this stuff we're looking at, nobody really knows for sure, and all we have to do is agree to disagree and get a little bit of focus. Because one thing we do know, the world is run by criminals. And if we get a little bit of focus there, we're at a time in history where I believe we can actually fix it. Of course, there's two popular schools of thought on where we come from. There are others, but there's the two most popular, which of course is evolution or creationism. I personally don't particularly buy into either of them. Evolution is completely ridiculous. I mean, even Charles Darwin said it was a theory, and there's so many missing pieces that it just doesn't fit together. I mean, the concept that we would have come from apes and gorillas is ridiculous because these things still exist, and so do we, and there's never been any transitional species found, and there never will be. And there's so many differences between us and gorillas and apes that it just beggars belief that they could even have suggested it to begin with. You know, and they'll present it to you and make it sound all very believable and they'll say things like Look, there's only one percent difference in the dna between apes and humans so there's a close cousin what they don't tell you is there are 20 billion base pairs in the human dna and so one percent of that is 20 million base pairs and no matter how you look at it that's a huge difference between species folks there's a great book that was put out by lloyd pye called everything you know is wrong where he went through the whole plethora of differences between us and apes and virtually prove that evolution from apes is impossible for humans. So that theory really doesn't work no matter what people might say and no matter how much it's promoted by the mainstream. Of course the other theory is creationism. I don't particularly buy into that but some people do but of course it's one of those theories that you can't really debate, you can't really offer proof of, it simply rests on faith. And so that just depends on your religious perspective. Those who choose to believe it do, and those who choose not to don't. But the thing is, even with either of those theories, none of them really explain. Neither of them explain all the ruins that are lying around everywhere. None of them explain why they've gone to such an incredible amount of effort to hide history from us. And if you don't think they have hidden history, folks, if you think I'm sort of stretching it by even saying that, well, just ask yourself why all these things exist all around the earth, why all these monuments are there, and why they're all hushed up and we're not told about them. And of course, you've got a whole group of people, such as David Icke even, will tell you that the whole place is run by reptiles. World governments are controlled by a reptilian, non-human race. And of course, that sounds completely preposterous to people. And then you start looking through all the ancient texts and you start looking through all the cave drawings and all the stuff that you hear from the Native Americans and all this sort of stuff. And they all talk about reptiles and their snake brothers. You also hear it from the Australian Aboriginals. But again, you've got to wonder how much of it has simply been put there. How much of them are real and how many have been concocted? That's the thing. You just don't know. And getting back to the concept that the Earth has been invaded and is being strip mining, you could even ask yourself whether the Flat Earth Movement was introduced right at the time they are finishing their mining operations to make people believe that space doesn't exist and that aliens are impossible. And the thing is, you can prove just about all of it to be true, but that doesn't make any of it so. And you see how easy that was to just construct a believable scenario. And some people may say, oh no, that's not believable. But well, you know, if you're a conspiracy theorist, then maybe it is believable. That's the thing, folks. You just don't know. See, any scenario could be true. And the thing is, folks, that if you really get out there and you start looking at all the information and you start gathering information, and you start preparing yourself some type of a presentation or whatever, you can prove anything you want to prove. That's the thing. Like I said, you can prove that it's all about flat earth 
or you can prove that it's all about globe earth you can prove the earth has been invaded you can prove that the flat earth was introduced to cover up the fact that the earth is invaded and you can prove all of those things plus you can prove a whole bunch of other things as well you can prove that there's reptiles living under the ground and controlling everything from under the earth you can prove that it's all run by the jews you can prove that it's all run by the jesuits you can prove that it's all run by the freemasons you can prove that it's all a hologram but the thing is you can only prove any of it up to a certain point but you can prove it enough to make it believable and to get other people to believe it and you can only do that because they've hidden history and the fact is that we don't know any one of the scenarios that i've outlined for you today is true i can prove it but that doesn't make any of it true because the reason I can prove any of them to be true is because all the information has been put out there to be able to create a believable scenario about anything you choose to believe.